What's up guys, welcome to Stronger TV. I'm Kiefer Lammy here with Dan Pope. Dan, what are we going over today? I'm really excited today. Cause we're going over back pain and squatting. I like it. <laughs> uh, we got the spiny the spine here and I want to go over a few concepts that lead to maybe some increased stress in the spine. Um, the other concept is that when people are in pain, a lot of times they can't tolerate very specific positions. So we're gonna talk a little bit about that with our spine model here, and then we're gonna demonstrate some good modifications you can do when you have an athlete who's in pain and they wanna get out of pain so they continue squatting in the future. Love it. Make sense? Okay, so the first little thing to understand is that let's say that I have our spine model right here and I'm squatting super upright in this position, all right? This is a little bit less stress on the spine in comparison to this right here. Okay? And it's even actually harder for me to hold the spine up in this position. So as you can see, what's happening is these vertebrae all want to slide forward. Those are called shear forces. When I go upright like this, you can see the skeletal structure is supported by itself a little more so. A little less work for some of the muscles to control motion here. All right? So if an athlete with a bunch of pain, a lot of times doing this is a lot more stress on the spine. and They don't feel so good, but they get a little more upright and they feel quite a bit better, right? So, so this would be the difference like between a low bar back squat and more of a front squat or a goblet squat position. You got it, man. Okay. The other thing is that as I descend into the bottom position of a squat, I start to run out of range of motion in my ankles and in my hips. And as this happens, as I go down, my low back naturally has to round a little bit. And this happens with everyone, okay? So let's say I'm going down to the bottom of my squat. As soon as I get down to the bottom, I start to get a little, we call it butt wink, right? Or lumbar spine flexion. Now some individuals with low back pain, they really don't tolerate this position very well, okay? So another thought that we can do is just to not go quite as deep, right? Or we can add some more mobility to the chain, all right? That might be some mobilizations for the hips, that might be some mobilizations for the ankles, or maybe you're putting um, a lift underneath that athlete's heel, or putting them in Oli shoes. A lot of those things can reduce some of that flexion in the lower back. Okay. What are you thinking? I like it. You want to go through some squatting and we'll kind of explain it some? Sure. I'll be your dummy. You show me what you want to do. All right. Let's go through that uh, low bar back squat and let's okay. uh, kind of try to go so people can see in the camera. Very good. All righty. So first and foremost, let's go down to the bottom of the squat. Give me that low bar. Let me just show these guys what I'm talking about here. So Kiefer's really exaggerating this well. And one of the things you'll see is that his spine is a little bit inclined forward as a result. Okay. And that's just going to increase a little bit of stress on that spine there. Now go into a deeper squat for me, Keith. You can see a little bit here, his lower back starts to round some. Okay. This is not necessarily a bad thing for most people, but if they have low back pain, a lot of times they won't tolerate this well. All right. Come on back up again. So as you can see, this low bar back squat is not always the most low back friendly exercise from a squatting perspective. Can you show me more of a high bar that's a little bit more upright? Okay. And go ahead down to the bottom of that squat. Okay. Kiefer's actually doing a better job here of staying more upright. So again, a little bit less stress on the spine in this position, which is really nice. Okay. Let's have you stand back up again. One of the things I want you to keep in mind is that some people are having mobility restrictions at the ankle, which is naturally going to incline them forward. So if you ask them, hey, stay a little bit more upright in your squat, a lot of times they won't be able to do that, okay? The other piece is uh, how long your femur is and how long your torso is. Do you mind going down to the bottom squat again for me? Sure. Okay, very good. So from the side, let's say that Kiefer has an abnormally long femur. So from here to here is Kiefer's femur. Let's say Kiefer's femur goes all the way back to here, all right? Now his torso has to be more inclined in order to get into a good position. So, okay, come on back up again. So get the bar over top of his center of mass. He has to incline his torso more forward, okay? So if you have a person who has naturally a uh, long femur and a short torso, their spine has to be more inclined forward. And there's really not much you can do about that besides maybe getting some more mobility at the ankle and a little bit more mobility at the hip so they can just stay into a little bit better position. What are you thinking there, man? That sounds great. Okay, very good. Um, the other piece to talk about, if you want to rack the weight you can, Keith. Sure. Um, so generally, and this is kind of popping up in some of the research studies that we're seeing, when you give someone a different barbell, which should theoretically keep them more upright, let's say like a front squat or a, um, let's say a safety squat bar as opposed to a, a barbell back squat, and you have them squat, theoretically they can stay more upright in a front squat position or stay a little more upright in a safety squat bar. But the problem is if an athlete has been training a certain squat for a long period of time, they get really strong there and they build a habit of squatting in that position. So what ends up happening is that if you give someone a modification, you also have to make sure that they're utilizing the more range of motion in that position and training them. 
What do you think? I, I, I think yeah. this is a huge thing because I found this with some of our athletes that we work with here is, you know, we're, we're almost taught to believe that um, front squat is easier to teach and it's better for you and so we should do it with all of our athletes, right? But then we get in a kid maybe that's a football player, he came, came from more of a football background and they're used to back squatting, they're used to sitting their hips back a ton, I give them a front squat and it hurts just as much or even more. Yeah. Because what we find is that these kids are doing a front squat and we think it's going to be this nice upright position, but they do it like they did their back squat. Mm -hmm. So they sit back and now instead of having the bar in the back, they have the bar in the front and it puts a ton of added stress on their trunk to be able to support it and it feels crappy. Yeah. So I think it's important to note that, you know, it's not always the magic fix to go to a different squat variation to get a specialty bar or something, but we do kind of have to work on, you know, improving these positions, teaching them how to do a squat, not just trying to give them this magic pill that's going to fix it. Yeah, I couldn't agree with you more. I think you have to try a few things first, right, and see what actually works out. Sure. Uh, Kiefer brought up a really good point. So sometimes you think, okay, that front squat is going to go really well, yeah. right? And then you get an athlete front squatting, and they're like, that actually hurts worse. And you're kind of scratching your head like, you know, it doesn't make any sense, right? At the end of the day, what I tell athletes to try and coach to try is that try a variety of different uh, exercises and modifications and just basically use the one that works the best for the athlete on that that day, right? right. Um, you can always guess based on these, these um, principles that we just talked about, but a lot of times it just doesn't work out well. Yeah, you know? I think what, what's helped me a ton from a coaching perspective is, you know, right away maybe you're limiting range of motion to something they can control and something that feels good to them. You're slowing down their tempos and reducing the load so it's a little bit less overall stress, but they have some more awareness of what they're doing. And then, you know, if they do have mobility restrictions, we're spending some time working on that before we start to prepare for the movement and work on those positions. Like you very much. Um, can I go over a few exercise variations that are pretty good that don't actually stress the back quite as much? Oh yeah, let's do it. Very good. Uh, a, couple, a couple ideas you can try even before you change the exercise mod or exercise too much and modify it is just uh, decreasing the load and you can do that for a variety through a variety of ways for one you can increase the repetitions let's say that day you're supposed to be doing sets of three and you're supposed to be going pretty heavy if you do sets of let's say six to eight you just have to decrease that load and that decrease in load can decrease the stress on the spine a little bit the other thing you can try to do is you can add a tempo right and add pauses to different parts of the lift uh, reason being is that if you have to do five repetitions, but you have a three second lower and a three second pause in the bottom, you definitely have to use less load than if you're just ripping through straight sets, right? So you can just decrease some of the load and sometimes get people squatting pain free without having to change that modification. Yep. Um, at the end of the day, if all else fails and you're still having pain when you're trying to squat, a lot of times I love switching to a single legged exercise. Yeah. And I think this is good for two reasons, right? So let's say I'm doing um, a single legged squat, right? And I'm going down here. I basically have two legs and one spine. So when I squat, a lot of times my limiting factor is going to be my spine. If I'm on one leg at a time, my limiting factor is probably going to be my legs. So I'm loading up my legs quite a bit and the stress of the spine goes down, 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 right? So single legged uh, squats are phenomenal, but also lunge variations, step ups, anything that's got you uh, working the lower body, but minimizing stress in the spine is phenomenal. Do you have any favorites there? No, I would say, you know, stuff like lunge variations, um, rear foot elevated split squats I like a lot. And you know, like you kind of talked about, it might depend on what their goal is, right? So if this is somebody that's um, squatting for powerlifting or for weightlifting, then we gotta continue to work on range of motion. Maybe we're doing an extended range of motion single leg exercise. If it's just a field sport athlete, then stuff like single leg squats to a bench where the range of motion is limited and they can really work on control for that, it's gonna be money for them. It's gonna be phenomenal, yeah. Um, the last thing I will say is that when an athlete is trying to get back to squatting, uh, I think these principles also apply in reverse, right? <clears throat> this is one of the things we talk about a lot with our, our group Stronger and individuals that have back pain and they're trying to get back to squatting. Sure. We want them to slowly ramp up the stress in their spine to the point they can squat again. You know, One of my favorite things to say is that exercise is the medicine that's going to get you better. But it has to be dosed appropriately. So I'm always telling my patients, look, two aspirin is great for your headache. whole bottle is going to kill you. You need to find the right dosage to help you. Right? It's not the aspirin's fault that you died, it was the dosage, you didn't take it properly. So when you have low back pain, you're trying to work your way back up to squatting, we need to show the spine the exact stress it needs to be able to handle. All right? We do that by, by squatting. Right? Yep. But maybe that athlete has low back pain that you had to take them all the way back down to a lunge because it's so painful. Once they start getting out of pain, we start working on very upright squat positions. As that's feeling better, we go hips back a little bit more so. And then the load keeps on going up over the course of time. And then you have the frequency and the volume and all that builds over the course of time. So now you're back to squatting, you know, full force again. Love it. Love it too. Anything else? That's it. <laughs> All right, guys, thanks again for listening. As always, if you have any other questions or things you want us to address, drop a comment below or DM us, and we'll see you next time.